Hey all, here OS Reviews. About two years back, we checked out the TK Board Pro, which is a very unique keyboard because it has a LCD touchscreen display. It just makes it a bit more flexible and interesting than the typical keyboard that we had seen at the time. Today we're taking a look at essentially the deluxe version of that. Still has a display on the side of the keyboard, but this time the screen is bigger. It has more utility because it's able to act as a stream deck so you can create different sound effects. And more importantly, the keyboard, instead of being a chiclet island style, a membrane keyboard, is now a mechanical keyboard, as well as it's backlit. You can even change the colors of the RGB just by using the touchscreen on the side. More for content creators and gamers, because it is made of glass you do get a more responsive kind of trackpad as well that is very large to use and it is effectively plug and play working with uh, windows mac os it has different io for connecting headphones to hear the sound effects and have input for recording audio through your microphone and passing through the essentially sound deck that's on board we can pick between red brown switch options now in terms of the pricing it starts at around 160 bucks but depending on the configuration can be a little more expensive so i think it's not bad considering all the special features that you're getting on here. Inside of this shiny box, we have, of course, the keyboard itself, which also includes a free-tempered glass screen protector that you can use to, again, further add some resistance onto that touchscreen display. Auxiliary cables for connecting to microphones and the audio port of your computer if you're using the sound capture mode. And there's also a standard USB Type-C port for connecting to data on your computer. We do get some spare keycaps, but they are mostly the accent keys. Taking a close to look at the keyboard itself, it really is just a regular mechanical keyboard, again a 75% layout, plus the addition of this display on the side, which if we put a phone onto the edge there as reference, measuring almost 6 inches diagonally. So definitely keep in mind that this thing is going to be a bit wider as a result of this display. We do have a built-in speaker though as aforementioned, as well as some controls for quickly launching into media buttons, as well as turning on or off the screen. Now again, the overall design of this section is quite reminiscent of the aforementioned TK Board Pro. In fact, I might assume they are part of the same factory. Even though the placement is kind of switched, we can tell that Again, the buttons in terms of their layout, as well as the speakers, they look very similar. And on the back here is also where we can find the USB Type-C port. And then located on the right-hand spine is where you find all of the I.O. for the auxiliary and sound capture input. And finally, on the back, you do have a bit of soft-touch rubber feet that allows you to pop it up at an elevated angle. And we can tell that with this particular configuration, we have the brown switch versions. I would definitely recommend switching them out with the colorful keycaps which are included. This is basically what the keyboard now looks like with the vibrant spacebar, escape keys, arrow keys, and the backspace. Plugging it in and the keyboard instantly pops onto life, but because it is running on Android with the touchscreen component, it does take about 20 seconds to boot up, but afterwards we'll be greeted with this uh, pretty simple UI and all the controls, including the media keys, are backlit so it can be still seen in the dark as you can see there. By default, it's going to be just a glowing single color that slowly transitions into the RGB effects, which is looking quite good. And the screen itself is a IPS display, so viewing angles are actually quite good, no issues in terms of visibility. As we are navigating and interacting with it, you can really tell underneath the hood that I think it's technically running on something like Android 5.0 Lollipop or something like that, but it's just been heavily modded so it's only displaying the relevant icons, so you are restricted from being able to access the typical settings from Android, but overall still is responsive enough and easy to use. So some things that we are able to do from here include the mouse, and this will open up basically a virtual touchpad, which you can navigate around using your fingers. You can use two fingers to scroll up and down using multi-touch gestures. We can even put one finger down and then scroll like this to imitate the uh, scroll wheel on a real mouse. And again, it is surprisingly well optimized and doesn't actually become too annoying, still feels good enough to use, to be honest. Otherwise, you can also change the speed, essentially the DPI, by using the virtual slider here. We can tap to go back, and other things that we can access include shortcuts to a quick calculator that's just built directly into the keyboard portion. And we can also jump into the light mode. This is for customizing the different lighting effects that we have on the keyboard. This really is, I think, one of the compelling reasons or use cases, I would say, for the second display, because compared to a regular 
mechanical keyboard where you have to cycle in a loop to get through the effects. On here you can easily switch between let's say lighting 8 versus lighting 2 with a single click so it's a little faster to transition and get exactly to the mode that you want. So anyways the second lighting mode here is going to be a slightly breathing effect. By the way you can also change things like the brightness of the RGB lights. We can crank it up. We can also change things like the speed of the animations, make it faster and slower transition left and right, turn on the RGB effects on or off, and that can all be adjusted by a single click. Here's the third mode, which is more of that kind of rippling pattern in a rainbow. The fourth mode here is more of that wave pattern going over to the right, but again, I can speed this up or I can switch the direction to move to the right versus to the left, and all of this is controlled, again, using this Android computer on the side. Tap on lighting five, this is a reactive mode, which will kind of change the different colors as you are typing along. None of these effects I would say are necessarily ones that we haven't seen before, but they are still pretty neat to play around with. This is a reactive memory mode. Lighting effect seven is back into kind of a rippling uh, wave or a circular pattern that is dissipating from the middle outwards. And another one here is gonna be more of a candy shaped randomized effect. And lighting 9 is going to be more of that dynamic animation, but it's not quite as practical here because it's a little harder to make out the keys in the dark, but it looks cool as more of a conversation mode. And this one here is spiraling into this uh, larger circle that you can see there. We can also slow it down more precisely or even pause it completely onto a single frame by using that slider. Of course, we can also turn off the lights completely if we prefer. And tapping on the light DIY, we can also customize the individual keys in terms of their colors. So for instance, I want to change this to a specific color. I will bring up this uh, carousel of uh, different effects that we can then switch into. Even the tone, the shade of the color can be specifically matched to our liking. Over 16 million options. And say we want to change this to red, we can also accent individual keys, including the space bar, the enter key, escape key, something like the arrow keys, and you can again change these one at a time per your liking. Well, let's say I want to change it to a different color such as blue, so it gives you a lot of granularity in terms of that overall process, and it is really easy to do because you don't have to install a third-party program on your computer to get into this level of granularity. You can also jump into the numpad, a virtual one that takes the space of a regular uh, numpad, and obviously it's going to be a little easier to use for Excel calculations. Other applications, including on live, that is corresponding to the sound capture mode. And on here, you can also connect to wireless headphones as well, because this thing does have a built-in Bluetooth chip, and we can create these special sound effects. So for instance, funny, it will create a laughter. <laughs> And again, if you are a live streamer or a gamer, you can hear some of those effects in a lot of those videos. Basically, this will enable you to do that. So you can do things like begin recording a video, and as you are talking, press there to create some of those special effects. And you can control things like how loud you want the sound effect to play in terms of the recording. You can even create your own DIY sound uh, using some of these presets. And this is the area where you can use their built-in application to also sideload it with your own sound effects and push it over to the board. Auto-tune is built on into a certain key. Uh, as well as some equalized sound effects that will just enhance, again, the sound. If you're playing back music, for instance, and you're recording reverb into kind of a regular voice mode, a singer mode, all of these properties can be adjusted. So more shortcuts that uh, you didn't have on the first page can be found here, a pause, so on and so forth. You can add up to five pages of widgets and shortcuts. So again, if you do download their third-party app, you can drag and drop more applications in the future from your computer over. As far as being a keyboard is concerned, it is fairly typical. The brown switches are overall, again, pretty responsive. I like the way it feels, and it is quite easy to get used to the layout and start typing along. So overall, all the keys do feel pretty well stabilized, and it is very responsive and easy to type on, quite satisfying in fact, and comfortable to use for essays, documents, emails, and of course for gaming as well. Now with that being said, perhaps one side con is the actual letters themselves don't really uh, become too obvious in terms of 
shining through. And that's just because of the material choice of the plastic keycaps they've chosen here. It's a little bit more rigid, and this type of material will better withstand wear in terms of oils and grease. It's going to last you a little longer, but as a result, it's not quite as translucent in terms of shining through. But like I said, you can always customize the keycaps if you prefer. All right, so that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Quick CR 84, this very unique mechanical keyboard because it has that built-in touchscreen display. Of course, whether you will find something like this super useful is going to vary from a case-to-case -case basis. It can be seen as more of a niche product in that sense, but if you want kind of an all-in-one solution, as well as you really need those controls for audio and primarily those sound effects because you are a live streamer, I think that's where this particular model really does shine. As a keyboard, it works well. The keys themselves feel sensitive. You can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the very unique CR840.